it used to be the case that the issues of gender inequality, gender differences in education, labor force participation, pay, or political power were essentially seen as equity or justice issues. But in the last 20 years, a literature emerged that investigated whether these gender inequalities also affect economic performance of countries. And um, the purpose of this paper is to look at this literature and see whether there is indeed convincing evidence that gender inequality affects economic performance, in what way it affects economic performance, and whether there are possible win-win situations where you can promote gender equity and justice and promote economic performance at the same time. It is actually quite difficult to estimate the impact of gender gaps on accurate economic performance. And there are different methods, each of which have some strengths and weaknesses. One method is theoretical models that actually model the impact of gender gaps on uh, economic performance. They can provide insights on particular mechanisms, how gender gaps can affect economic performance. Then there are what I would call accounting studies, such as uh, recent by McKinsey, who just estimate how much larger would world GDP be if all women worked and earned the same as men. This method is really quite problematic because it um, assumes that we could just change the world by just adding all these female workers without impact on wages, without impact on unemployment, without impact on men. And so I think this method is problematic. A third method is using cross-country regressions that basically relate economic performance of countries to gender gaps and other economic features of these countries. To some degree, this is the most appropriate method to look at this because you can answer the question most directly, but of course there are also questions of causality and uh, best specification. And the last one is using micro-level studies we look at particular interventions, for example, to promote female education and see how that affects household incomes. Those are also very useful, but um, it's very hard for, um, for these methods to then upscale to the national level what they mean for aggregate economic performance. So what we do in our study is um, to review all of these methods and um, triangulate to try to find robust results. And then we particularly focus on doing a systematic review and meta-analysis of all the cross-country regressions on the topic to see whether gender gaps in education and labor force participation have an impact on economic performance. So when it comes to results, um, one first number must note that there is greater heterogeneity in results than I would have thought. In the often public policy discussions, it is seen as a foregone conclusion that reducing gender gaps will promote economic performance. But when actually doing a systematic review of the literature, um, the findings are not as clear. In the field of gender gaps in education, there are many studies and uh, one can do a very uh, a good systematic review and meta-analysis and our meta-analysis shows that there is a robust finding that re reducing gender gap in education promotes economic performance of countries. In the field of gender gaps in labor force participation or pay, there are many, many fewer studies. There are some theoretical studies and there are few empirical studies, but most of them have some methodological issues. And those studies tend to suggest that reducing gender gaps um, will also promote economic performance. But because they are so few and they're so um, varied and methodology uh, sometimes weak, we cannot be sure of that 
um, of that point of the stage. And lastly, there are lots of individual microlab studies that show that gender gaps in access to credit, input, land, and other things can also affect economic performance. But those studies are always very, very local, and it's hard to generalize, generalize from them. Our study, of course, has quite a direct policy relevance. For example, the G20 have a process of um, analyzing gender gaps, and they have used the McKinsey estimates to argue why the G20 should promote female labor force participation rights. What we are now saying is, well, the evidence uh, is only clear in the case of promoting female education. And um, while, of course, there is an equity and maybe a justice case to be made to promote female employment opportunities, the claim that they will have a large and immediate impact on, on economic performance is problematic. And uh, also, um, it, is, um, it suggests that this changing such a policy will be very easy. And, but um, those simulations are really not um, any guide to how the impact will play out over time. So what we really need is much more studies than investigate, for example, particular country experiences or policies to promote female employment, to then see what the impact they had on economic performance in those countries. So we need, um, similar to the education field, we need a large, settled body of literature, of empirical literature, that investigates these effects before we can jump to policy conclusions. So in terms of outlook, I think um, we need quite a lot more research in this area. As I mentioned, it's quite difficult to just rely on one method to analyze this question. So we need more research in all dimensions. We need more theoretical research to investigate the question of how gender gaps can affect the human performance. We need many more uh, empirical studies using cross-country work, but also country case studies that investigate the impact of changing gender gaps in one dimension on the economic performance of countries. And um, we then need to also more systematic reviews of the many, many micro-level studies that look at um, the impact of changing employment or education at the local level. So I think Despite the fact that um, in public policy discussion, it seems like a settled matter, I think for research, there's still many open questions that need to be addressed. And I think this field of research will be fruitful for uh, many years to come. <laughs>